Welcome back to the Rancho Gordo Kitchen. Today we have Special guest, Hiro Sone, who was the chef at Terra, one of Napa's most favorite restaurants that uh, sadly is no more. Sadly for us, but it's good for you because you're in retirement, yeah. right? <laughs> yes. Do you ever have a little inkling like, ooh, I'd like to go back? Or uh, Yeah. It, actually, every day I think about the new concept. But uh, 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 <laughs> Yeah. It's just come out new concept, but uh, I don't have a mm, to go exactly. into the yeah. business. Yeah. But in the meantime, we can make some of the dishes. You have a beautiful book that was Thank 10 you. speed, wasn't it? Thank you. Yes. yes, a big, fat, gorgeous coffee table book that you can actually cook from. And speaking of cooking from it, one of your most famous recipes is this radicchio salad. Thank you. And I think we'll make it today. And we're going to see if the option of beans with the radicchio salad makes sense. And it's one of those things you look at the le list of ingredients and you think, I can make this. This is not a big deal. And then you have the salad, it's like, oh wait, this is not what I think. And if you think you don't like radicchio because maybe it's too bitter or it's too uh, crunchy or whatever, just wait. I, I, don't you think that's true? You know, it's funny. Most people think it's bitter. It is bitter, but uh, what is the trick? Because after they eat the, our radicchio salad, they say it's not bitter. That's why right. they always ask the same question. Why is this is not bitter? Actually, it's something to do with, I soak radicchio in the water for a little while that removes some of the bitterness. Also, uh, vinegar. Okay. It's a help to kind of calm the bitterness a little bit. So it's a simple salad, but it's pretty good. Huh? Pretty good, yeah. No, it's, uh, your, your wife, Alyssa, was telling me that people in the grocery store still run into her and say, oh, you know, we miss your salad more than <laughs> anything. And the funny thing is, I don't mind bitter. In fact, I love bitter. Yeah, So me it's too, me uh, too. interesting, but this, is a great blend of everything. So what are the ingredients we're going to use? Uh, so main, main ingredients is radicchio. So I have it here. But uh, we, we like to pick something that uh, kind of feels heavy, so it's more packed with the leaf. These instead are pretty kinda, light, yeah. Instead of a soft one, nice kind of hard ball. And usually outside leaf is kind of, you can see a, mm -hmm. a black, so you, you can remove. I'm going to show you later how to prepare this, but uh, then a uh, uh, simple vinaigrette make with uh, sherry vinegar, also balsamic vinegar. I have a sunflower oil, uh, extra virgin olive oil, and mustard, salt, and pepper. And we have a crouton somewhere. And parmesan, I think, right? Oh, did I say that? Yeah. Oh, and the parmesan and the garlic, yes. Yeah. And we... We're going to get the green kind in the can, but I thought, you know what? Hero's coming. Let's spend a little extra and get real Parmesan cheese. <laughs> you, was that worth it, do you think? I oh, think, yeah. Definitely. I think it's worth Listen, it. Yeah. I know it's, like it's, it's, I always think uh, Parmesan cheese are perfect things. There's no such a thing as perfect in the yeah. world, but uh, I think it, it's close. Parmesan yeah. cheese is a human created something perfect thing. Yeah. That's great. And then we're going to experiment. We have two beans today to see what you prefer. Mm -hmm. Alubia blanca, which are small little white beans. Mm -hmm. And we have big, fat royal coronas, which my instincts tell me that might be a better mm. try. But we can see how things go. Okay. All right. So what's the first thing we're going to do? So first thing, I'm going to soak uh, uh, radicchio. Clean the radicchio and soak it in the water. So check radicchio, anything like uh, black or wilted. I'm going to remove, but the first things, uh, I'm going to cut in a half. Outer leaf, leaves are large like a cabbage. Remove like that. Then uh, just tear off the bite-sized pieces. I notice sometimes I use knife, change colors. Okay. But, uh, is that as the metal reacting to the... Maybe. As much as you can, you just use a hand to tear off the... Yeah, we got uh, time. Yeah. ...bite-side pieces. And I apologize for the supermarket radicchio. It's funny. You know, as a chef, you get delivered only the best and, uh, as consumers. And your recipe called for two heads, but I thought the same. They're kind of light. I'm going to get three just to be safe. Uh -huh. But I don't think it's hard to grow if you have a home garden. I don't know. My, uh, I, I did once. It was too much trouble. Yeah. 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 Did you make a bowl? You know, just leaves. Like oh, that. oh. That's, that's the hardest part, I think. Maybe here in Napa, it's too warm. Maybe mm, it needs maybe. a colder mm -hmm. climate. Look like this is enough for how many people? 
Well, for today we'll do two. The recipe, I believe that we're gonna put, post later, it serves four. Mm -hmm. But you, let's just do it for two. Two. Oh, so two. Maybe this is enough for two. Well, you have one pig and one human, so I think you want to uh, <laughs> be very careful about it. <laughs> what, what? You know, actually, it's funny. Uh, Sometimes uh, you have a party or something, you have leftover radicchio sara. Actually, next day, it's pretty good. Okay. And uh, I try to put, uh, Terra, we have a charcoal grill. So Ooh. anything we have a, like a extra, we just toast it and then leave overnight. Or after toss, you know, if you don't use everything, uh, we put on a grill. Mm. So good. And it caramelizes a little bit, right? Caramelizes yeah. a little bit. Nice. And a complete different texture than uh, uh, that will be good with like a bean stew too. Ooh, ooh, yeah. okay. You have a bean stew and I put the radicchio, grilled radicchio sada in it. That would be so good. I don't too. really like beans. They're kind of hard to digest. <laughs> I say that all the time. <laughs> you say you like beans. It's my, it, my marketing prowess. Yeah. Okay. So water. And at least at least soak one hour. Then we spin, dry. Then uh, meanwhile, I can make a vinaigrette for this. And so you've just done this barely to cover, I'd say. Yeah. Is that about right? Yeah. Okay. And you don't have to massage it or do anything. Just no. <laughs> no. I thought you. I thought you had to work massage. harder. All right. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna make a vinaigrette for radicchio sara. So garlic, just small, small garlic. So normally you'd work with better knives and better, uh, maybe a better whisk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, this is like Kenner Easy Bake whisk. <laughs> So what I do is uh, I grate the garlic. Mm -hmm. Or you can use a garlic press, or you can chop small, but this is much, much easier. And what, a microplane grater, too, yeah. those are good, yeah. right? So yeah. like this, yeah. can you see? Oh. So just just a little garlic gonna go, yeah, strong enough. Then a little bit of uh, sherry vinegar. We were talking about in the old days in grocery stores, sherry vinegar was everywhere, and now it's kind of a specialty item, which is yeah, a right? shame because it's such a good vinegar. I like sherry vinegar, yeah. It's a balsamic. And this is real funky balsamic for Modena. Ooh. Oh, you can smell it from here too. Mm-hmm. It makes my finger black too. Nice. <laughs> and Dijon mustard. I think it's interesting you mixed sherry vinegar and balsamico, and I don't I think that's unusual. Yeah, uh this recipe is a parmesan balsamico balsamic vinaigrette, but uh, First time I made it, but it's and your it tastes good, tastes good, but it's uh, everything become black. Oh, okay. That was the reason I had the sherry vinegar oh, so to make a, okay. there's a flavor of a balsamic, kind of sweetness of balsamic, but the uh, color is not so dark. Right. So showing the nice red color of radicchio, that was the reason. Then usually vinaigrette, so uh, vinegar, everything, but the uh, oil is later on, but the, uh, I mix everything together. Mm -hmm. So here's a sunflower seed oil and extra virgin olive oil. And salt, pepper. So just whisk now. And in the restaurant, you'd probably use a bigger whisk, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is very cute. Yeah. So, okay. so reason I put everything together, uh, if you start 
adding a, a oil later on, mm -hmm. some, sometimes it's emulsified, become like a mayonnaise. Wow. And uh, uh, it tastes different. It's a, sure. Once you emulsify the vinaigrette, it tastes completely like, almost like mayonnaise. Also coated a uh, beautiful radicchio too much. Okay. So become like a pale red. So that's why everything together. So you can see it's a separate, a completely separate vinaigrette. But the, when we add a Parmesan cheese, somehow combine enough. Okay. Yeah. So taste. Let me see. Can I use this? Sure. Let me taste. Oh, it's pretty good. Is it? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> All right, so our radicchio has been soaked for about an hour. What's, and then normally you'd put it in a salad spinner. Yeah. Right? But you're I working. Mean, a re restaurant, we have a huge top, like this size top. Yeah. Spin it. And we have to yeah. do this side top for. Well, for sure, because everyone wanted the salad times. too, right? Because you cannot fit in the top so much because it, it doesn't dry. Right. Enough. So a little bit of. Let us and spin it and put the next one, spin it, yeah. I'm so old, I remember in the late 60s when they introduced salad spinners from France. Uh -huh. It was like oh, the most amazing thing. <laughs> but without a salad spinner, because you're slumming it today, uh -huh. did you, we, yeah, what towel. did you do here? And the rolled in the towel and the gentry top, so. So a super clean tea towel. Yeah. Also, something you know, washed with the detergent doesn't have a strange smell. Does this have a smell? No, no, oh. this one doesn't have a smell. No. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, detergent has sure. a fl flower smell or something. Another Maybe case, not for that, to, yeah. Yeah. Very good, and no fabric softener. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. And actually, is this a good, I, I'm asking you, but I think it is. Is this a good way to store this? Like, say you wanted on Friday, you're having a dinner on Saturday. Could you clean it and store it in this on Friday? Or would oh, you? Oh, good make a dry too. Yeah. So you spin it and put it in the bowl and put the plastic and keep it in the refrigerator. Okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, I usually put the kind of moist towel over. Uh, okay. So that doesn't get dry out. All right. Too much. So next one I'm going to do a uh, Parmesan cheese. So I have a little gadget here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, we used to use this one actually at the restaurant. <laughs> So just put it in here. Did you have a large one of these too? No, actually this one. The, the, the little one, that's uh -huh. the one. I mean, uh, uh, oh, come out like this, okay. Actually, we if we need to use a lot, we have a machine to yeah. create a Parmesan cheese. But this one, we keep this one at the uh, finishing Parmesan cheese. Okay. After plated this, and we can put this one over. But the sum, Parmesan cheese goes in the salad, so that's, I'm doing that. So we have a lettuce, we have vinaigrette, Parmesan cheese, and the crouton, like this, nice golden brown. And no cheese. oil, just straight cubed yeah. bread uh -huh. that is toasted. And it's gonna soak up right. this vinaigrette. Should I toast? Let's go for it. Yeah. Okay. I say let's, he's doing the work. I'm just, just hanging out. <laughs> First, you want to put the cheese. Actually, we need more. Mm -hmm. I love that you're eyeballing everything. Yeah. So before I put the vinaigrette, I will toss kind of cheese into the uh, lettuce. That way more evenly cheese, we can distribute cheese in the salad. After, if I, after we put dressing, then put cheese, cheese will stay in a kind of one position. Ah, okay. So, so make sure cheese goes everywhere. Then we, we put the vinaigrette. Spoon will be great. Let's go. So for the soaking, you prefer about an hour? Is that? Yeah, okay. at, at least. At least, all yeah. right. 
Could you do it overnight or is that too much? No, uh, you don't need to do it overnight. All right. Then you lose everything. Okay. Would you like to toast, Steve? No, I want you to do it. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want any responsibility here other than saying how delicious it is. Should I use this? Uh, if you like, yeah. Michokan. Maybe bowl is too small to do this, I guess. So I, I do, like I, I do at the restaurant. Use ham. Yeah. Make sure clean ham. Also, uh, you want to kind of massage here, radicchio. So uh, uh, dressing and the cheese sticks on the lettuce. I find a lot of people who make great salads do this. They always use their hands. There's just really no uh, yeah. compromise there. So, radicchio is pretty, you know, strong lettuce. You can massage if you have a really. What's great is you can see it's perfectly coated. Mm -hmm. Mm. It's good. Okay. So we have two beans for you to consider. These mm -hmm. are the Alubia Blanca, and these are the Royal Coronas. And I won't be offended if there's just a little bit of beans in it, or if you want to go oh, crazy, no, no, no. go. I'm going to let you decide. I, is that okay to use both? Or? If you like. So we have the Alubia Blancas and the Royal Coronas, but you're curi I'm curious why you are considering using both. Because I'm sort of a weird purist. I was like, oh, no, you always use one bean. I mean, one will be, you know, great. Mm -hmm. But the two, you can taste a different, visually different, also different texture. And a, a very interesting to play in, you know, two different type of beans together. Great. Let's see what you do. That's All good. Right. Okay. So I want to use this. How do you say again? Uh, Royal Corona. Royal Corona. Actually, this is so great. So big. Uh -huh. And I think it can compete with the radicchio and the dressing, too. Uh-huh. And very buttery, and it goes with the parmesan cheese also. Beautifully. Yeah. And the, the Royal Bianca? Uh, Lubia Bianca. Lubia Bianca. I don't even Lubia know what they're Bianca. called. Lubia Blanco. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then here's the Yeah. So plating. I want to I wanna use this Lubia Blanca on the plate. And you cook these beans with what? Onion or something in it? Onion, garlic. Uh -huh. No garlic this time? Olive oil? Yeah. yeah. And no Mexican oregano this time. Normally we will put uh, Mexican oregano, but this uh -huh. time we kept it neutral. Uh -huh. And salt, yeah. Then this one. Oh my God, this looks so good. You should open a restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But not with me. You know, I, I think we should not do business together with the friend. No, we, we have more fun eating, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I know Steve doesn't have a very much opinion, but uh, no, I, no, I do. Yeah. I'm just easygoing, carefree, uh -huh. sure, whatever works for everybody. If, we all, if one of us wins, we all win. That's enough. Uh -huh. Sorry. That is beautiful. Oh, then my the, allergies, I, I have though. a little extra dressing here. Right. And uh, drizzle over right. on the, on the uh, beans. Holy cow. And it's not in the recipe, but uh, you got really nice balsamic vinegar. <laughs> so I'm going to just drizzle. Here, there. Mm. So not every bite, but the, here, there, you get the nice balsamic Little surprise. Mm -hmm. This is from my friend Judy Witz Francini, who is the Cucina Divina in Florence. And finally. And uh, if you like, you can put pepper here. Mm -hmm. Should I do it? Mm, go ahead. Since I'm our master mm. pepper. All right. That's it. Wow. 
Hero, I can't wait to taste this. I can't get over how beautiful it is. Thank you. And you could me. actually, this could be a main course, really. Could be. Yeah, or you could have grilled something, but really on mm -hmm. its own, it's fabulous. Can we try it? Oh, please. You know, here. You have to use this? Uh, sure. Nice, uh, Michoacan, you say? Michoacan, yeah. Michoacan. And this could be a nice uh, bit of uh, your meat dish as well. Mm -hmm. You can put uh, chicken or uh, beef or something on the top. You know, you know when I'm just cooking at home or any for anybody, I love the idea of one platter with all the different elements that people can take from it. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm, I hate cleaning up, so to have one <laughs> platter to clean is a gift. I so you, I notice you're being careful to get a little bit of each component too. Yeah. And balance it. All right. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. May I? Oh, go ahead. You've had it. It's so perfect. It really? Really? Good. And the bean. Uh, yeah. You, you can keep your day job. <laughs> mm. So we get the pop up in the behind this shop, like what? Mm -mm -mm. Didn't say that. No, no, no. Hero, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, very, very cool. Can people follow you on Instagram or do you care? Uh, yeah, Instagram. Good. All right, here's something you to do that. Also, you're quite a musician. You are. Well, we're, we're going to do our Beatles tribute album one day. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. All right, so thank you from the Rancho Gordo Kitchen. Thank you very much.